I'm so happy you could join us. Boy, this is gonna be a great review. In the spotlight today, the all new Zoe ZT702S. Zotech, well, you know, it's one and the same. Oh, let's get this party started. Big shout out to Zotech. Thank you so much for sending the 702S in for this review. Oh man, I love a good celebration. And you know, the Zoe ZT702S is definitely something to celebrate because it does so much. Um, a oscilloscope and a multimeter in one very inexpensive but high quality package. I mean, <sighs> yeah. I'm really looking forward to this uh, meter for quite a while. And it finally came in. Uh, better late than never, and here it is. Uh, boy, this is a cool looking meter. Right off the get go, it just exudes quality. And you know what? I gotta get out there right away and say this is not an expensive meter. Not at all. We're talking about $75, uh, $80 US. That's it. That's so Tech even includes this super little carrying case. Oh man, I love it when we get cases with our multimeters. Uh, temperature probe because of course it does temperature and look at this it is a charging cable because oh yeah this one has a rechargeable battery mm. so tech also sends you this bevy of attachments because it does have that oscilloscope functionality you get a really good high quality oscilloscope probe right here and a little a few doohickeys as well uh, for your oscilloscope collection all in a really nice heavy duty plastic uh, casing here so you can keep everything nice and compact secure I like it some pretty special specs as well this is, has a 2.8 inch are you ready for this ips full view color screen 10,000 counts ips color oh we're gonna look at that shortly man that alone puts a smile on my face um once again has that really good tactile feel to it uh, the enclosure the rubberized boot is embedded it's molded it's part of the meter it doesn't come off but man does it ever feel good on the hand and it has that of course that nice red that you know makes it stand out on the bench it's really tucked away here on the side of the meter we have a couple of hidden ports we have the type c charging port to charge the battery that is uh, included with the meter and as well below that if you take a good look you can also see a couple of uh, terminals one of those is the the ground Oh, sorry the round port is the ground terminal and the square port is the signal terminal which has a constant output of I believe three volts uh, one kilohertz everything nice and discreet and goes away like so so easy access easy breezy yeah now one thing i'm not a fan of unfortunately is that tilt stand yeah it's just kind of you know a little wonky a little just not not there you know not ready for prime time would have liked to have seen something a little bit more robust um not such a cheesy little doohickey like this but just you know a real tilt stand but hey yeah i can live with it one thing i'm very impressed though is the fact that we get this really nice oscilloscope attachment here this is metal not a plastic flimsy doohickey no metal uh, connectivity for your oscilloscope i know some meters in the past uh, there was a unity one the name escapes me but had all plastic uh, housing here for the oscilloscope and it just wears out way too quick so good job zotech for thinking ahead of the game Really nice user manual as well. Color, full color. Oh, I love it. And the way they've broken down the extended menu interface, uh, it's very, very well done. So once again, kudos to Zotech Zoe for doing such a fine job with the user manual. Oh, nice, very nice. Ships with a protective uh, screen cover here. And let's just lose that, shall we? There we go. Okay, yeah, we don't want anything taken away from the overall effect. Okay, here we go. Let's power it up. Get that Zotac logo, and wow, that is quick to boot. And look at that gorgeous IPS display. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I mean, man, oh man, 
considering what you're paying for this meter, uh, absolutely incredible. Um, wow, one of the nicest displays I've seen on a uh, test instrument in a long, long yeah. time. I almost forgot to mention that it comes with these pretty nice 1000 volt max, 20 amp test leads. And man, they are sharp. Whoa, really good size, you know fits me like a glove uh, these are nice test leads really nice so uh looking forward to that actually too it looks like they're gold plated wow okay without further ado we're just going to jump right into the testing here we go i know that's what you're waiting for hit mode to take us out of oscilloscope now when you do boot up you boot up instantly into oscilloscope mode uh, but to get out of there just hit the mode and there you go multimeter voila we are gonna test a diode right now. So you see the F keys at the top, F1 through F4. Simply click on F2 and resistance, continuity, diode, and capacitance. So simple as that to change your selections. In diode, Let's start off, red LED. There we are, forward voltage drop and illumination. Over to the green, looking good. Yellow, not lit and nothing, the white, Actually, this is the unicorn. Over to the white. Yes, lit with a forward voltage drop. And the blue, same thing. Standard diodes, no worries here. So really just had a problem with that yellow LED. Output voltage in diode mode is a healthy 3.1 volts. Now, when you depress on the menu screen, you have an instant uh, notification of language selection, whether you want to enable the on off, your backlight intensity, right now it's set up to 100%, and which version of the firmware your 702S is currently running. To get rid of that, just hit the menu button again and away it goes. So really nice. And in terms of languages, well, you do have a choice between English, French, Chinese, or no, well, guess what? Language is English or Chinese. Um, for the auto off enabled, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120, and you can cancel it out altogether. I'm gonna leave it set to 15. Backlight is at 100% and you see how you can dim it out. Obviously, the more uh, you dim your backlight, the longer your battery life will be. And the version of the firmware we're running, 1.03.43. DC precision voltage time. I have a couple of voltage reference standards out here. Thanks again, Fred Chu. Amazing tech. Um, 5.000 volts is what we want. 5.0032-ish. Uh, definitely in spec. Let's try the 10 volt. And are we gonna get 10.00 volts? Oh, it is so close. It is so close. Oh. Man, it is hovering back and forth. So uh, yeah, just about there. Almost nailed it, but not quite. You may have noticed there's no selector switch on the ZT702S. They have done away with that in favor of these nice soft touch buttons, which work really well with this implementation. Uh, really nice feel, great quality texture. And uh, yeah, I'm not missing that selector switch, at least not now anyway. A bit. I wanted to get up close and personal uh, for you guys with that bar graph. Check that out. Wow, what a cool implementation. This is really close to your standard analog style uh, bar graph. I mean, man, oh man, they have done an amazing job. In terms of response time, response time, it is perhaps a tad on the slow side, but that being said, it just looks like a million bucks. Already time for a continuity, my favorite time. Stock default test leads, whoa, that was a false start. Here we go, three, two, one. Oh yes, latched, loud, and fast. And doesn't require much pressure whatsoever. Probe masters. Oh yeah, and once again, even a little bit faster with the probe masters. Seventy-eight point four decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Okay, I know you've been waiting for it. Hey, it's an oscilloscope multimeter after all, right? Let's talk a little bit about the oscilloscope. Yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you, the oscilloscope probes that this unit ships with is uh, par excellence. They are basically identical 
as my Siglent oscilloscope probes, um, almost identical. Really, the only difference is for the calibration, the capacitance calibration on the probes on the um, Agilent, it's actually... Yeah. So that little slot right there, and that is how you can adjust your uh, calibration for the probe for the Agilent. Adjusting compensation on the test probe for the 702S is really simple. It's located right there, and that's how you can adjust the waveform just to get it where you want it. So you don't want to have too much compensation, and you don't have too little. You want to have a nice, clean-looking waveform just like that. And by the way, worth pointing out, in this case, the test probe as well is set to times one. You have a times 10 and a times one setting. And if I put it on times 10, you can tell we would have to recalibrate. But I'm going to leave it on the times one and do a couple of... So I have my little miniware oscilloscope here attached to the 702S. And we're just going to go through a couple of different uh, waveforms. Triangle wave, looking good. sawtooth oh yeah and once again this is at five kilohertz easily adjustable volts peak to peak 0.10 volts right now want a smaller sine wave bigger over at the top here is our runtime status uh, waveform automatic acquisition status display so right now it is in a run state and if you're going to trigger capture data stop uh, you'll see all the different trigger modes come up over here uh, right beside that this is our time base it displays the current time base position uh, within the memory depth beside that is the uh, horizontal time base uh, scale value and as well over here is the uh, currently set vertical voltage scale value so lots of info in a small space the little green arrow over here this is our vertical uh, cursor displays the current triggered vertical voltage position so right now we're looking at that sine wave, 50 millivolts, uh, frequency at five kilohertz, uh, lots of info. Now let's just change our waveform. Let's see what we got here. Let's try triangle wave and yeah, look at that. And we can move with the up and down arrows to get a different size of that waveform. One of the cool things is even though it's a portable oscilloscope, you can still save your measured waveforms. And when you need to save your measured waveform, all you gotta do is press and hold the save button for two seconds. So here we go. One, two, and you see it has now saved it to a bitmap uh, on the flash drive of the unit itself. Oh, so waveform, it saved it as a bitmap on the oscilloscope. Now what? You wanna look at it three days later, what do you do? Well, no problem. This is all you have to do. Turn the oscilloscope on, hit that menu button two times. You're gonna see that storage pop up. Click on the F3 and it brings you right here into the USB disk driver mode. Take the enclosed USB cable, hook it up to the USB port on your computer, desktop or laptop, doesn't matter, and it's gonna come up as an external. Okay, so on your desktop, you're gonna see a couple of folders. One says firmware, the other says pick. Well, guess where that bitmap image is. If you said firmware, you fail. Click on the pick, and there it is. One image, what I've saved thus far, pick seven, double click on it, and bada boom bada bing, there is your waveform. Oh, so cool. And we were hooked up to that current reference, 100 milliamps coming in at 99.96. Now in high current sitting at five amps right now, let's bring it up. 6.3 amps coming in as 6.5, 7.75, 7 7.9, so a little high. 10 amps, we're getting that high current alarm. Bring it back down. So a tad on the high side, other than that, looking good. Thought I'd bring it in for a second opinion and look at that, the Sanwa agrees almost uh, point blank with the 702S, 2.646 uh, amps for the Sanwa. So it looks like that uh, GVDA power supply is a little bit out of calibration. Mm, gotta look at that. 
100 ohm precision resistor. Oh, awfully close. Resistance on those test leads. Yeah, there is a tad 0 0.07 of an ohm. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a rel on this meter as well. No rel feature. Ah, oh, it's too bad. 0.5 ohm resistor right now coming in at 0.58. And if you uh, take into account the uh, resistance in the leads, that's pretty well spot on. Let's check out the ranging speed now. One ohm, one mega ohm rather, two mega ohm, three mega ohm, four mega ohm, six mega ohm. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Seven, eight mega ohm, nine mega ohm. Let's go back to one mega ohm. And two may go. Yeah, no worries there. Faster range, accurate too. Quick look at capacitance, 100 millifarad maximum on this. Can we get there? Well, let's take a look. Let's actually get us into capacitance first. And there we go. Okay, 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. Come on, Zoe. Zoe, Zotec, Zoe. Maybe I wonder how they come up with these names. I would be really interested. Wow, it's taking a while. Let's try this again. I did discharge this capacitor before running the test. Here we go. Come on. Now, we don't have any indicator on the meter. There we are. 93 millifarad. Definitely, uh, yeah, it works. I wish we had some sort of an indicator just letting us know that it is, you know, going through the various capacitance stages, but hey, that was pretty fast. Opposite end of the spectrum, 10 nanofarad, looking good. And now we're gonna take a quick look at the temperature mode. No onboard sensor, you have to use the temperature probe to get your temperature. Um, hit the F4 button three times, and that brings us into temperature mode. By default, you're always gonna see your Celsius um, in the big display. You also have a temperature in Fahrenheit here at the bottom right as well. Too bad we cannot alternate uh, between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit for the main display. I, I tried everything, I couldn't get it to work. If there's a secret, let me know. Alrighty, 18 degrees Celsius in the studio, looking good. And you notice we even have a max min for the temperature, very cool. Oh yeah, it's a quick look at the teardown, starting off with the reverse side of that meter. And uh, yeah, no shielding, well, no surprises, but good quality plastics uh, through and through. Good stuff. Okay, now on to the nitty gritty. Oh man. As always, we'll start with those input jacks. They are not the split variety, no, those are screwed in, nice and solid. Hey, I love seeing this, especially on sub $80 meters, uh, hard Look, those to fuses. Go. Ceramic, those are five by 20 millimeter fuses. Um, hey, I love the fact that using ceramic, and these are diamond dozen, easily found on uh, online. Pretty decent spark gap protection as well. Some nice space here between uh, the inputs as well as the rest of those fuses. But what I don't like is we have a lot of, oh man, there's a screw that goes there to hold that PCB down and that is awfully close to the uh, input header over here. So uh, it could definitely be a little bit better in that department. And look, I know, one PTC. All right, let's face it, folks. Input protection is not where it's at with this meter. Um, but you know what? Hey, for household mains, it could be just fine. A couple of mouths over there. And oh yeah, that big, decent sized uh, current shunt as well with uh, lots of gap protection. That's our standard lithium ion 18650, 3.7 volts, uh, 7.4 watt hours, 2000 milliamps. And you know what? This is gonna give you probably about eight hours of runtime. And you know what? Some people are hooting and hawing about that minimum runtime, but so what? Bring along another spare 18650 battery and you are good to go. And you know, these charge really quickly as well. So eight hours, not a big deal when you can plug and play. Let's stay on the side of the PCB. Over here we have a relay. And uh, this I believe is the multimeter IC. It is a DM1109EN. It's a little funky. Um, if you recall, the DM1106ENs were used on a couple of, uh, I think at least one Unity clamp in the past. Those are basically modified or hybrid high contact um, ICs. So that's probably what we're looking at here. Some sort of hybrid going on. 
And beside that, we have a crystal oscillator, and here is our low voltage reference. That's the ICL 8069. Moving up, of course, we have our piezo, and um, there is the ribbon cable for that gorgeous display. A couple of uh, factory headers over here. And where was that? Yeah, right over here. That is the IC uh, I22, I'm sorry, 12203 uh, dual channel digital isolator. The oscilloscope housing connection is really in there nice and snug. And look at that, we got a uh, sort of a, uh, a tin box here giving us a lot of protection, a lot of isolation going on. Here's the uh, terminals and there is the USB-C in with the charging port. Opposite side of the PCB looks pretty good. Nice blobs of solder going on here. They weren't too cheap, though they did miss this one. This could have used a little bit more, that's for sure. But uh, not much going on here um, at all. And there you go, discreetly hidden underneath that gorgeous 2.8 inch IPS full view color screen is, you guessed it, well, did you guess it? Probably not. It's all smudged out. Why do they smudge it anyway? Ugh. Anyway, it's an Artery AT32F403. It's a 32-bit ARM processor, a maximum 200 megahertz CPU speed. Oh, gotta love it. Finally, over here, we have the other side of the meter. Man, oh man, look at that soft touch. The whole pad is soft touch. And those are really high quality uh, rubber pads as well. So very nicely done. Man, oh man, look at those brass threaded inserts for the opening and closing of the case as well as those uh, th inserts for the uh, inputs. Man, oh man, nice attention to detail. This thing is really well made. Are right, you gonna put everything back together? Come back with my closing thoughts. Decided to upgrade the lithium battery that the unit ships with to this 5,000 milliamp hour. So hopefully I can uh, double that runtime. Awesome. You might have already noticed, yeah, I'm really in love with the new 702S. From its seamless transition from a multimeter to a 10 megahertz oscilloscope, the hardware and software work incredibly well. And just in case you're wondering, I've had zero issues with this test instrument. Nothing funky or bad, no ill experiences to report whatsoever. Hey, considering the little amount of money for this Zoe Zotech uh, that is asking for this DMM, you really would be hard pressed to find anything currently on the market that can directly compete. I know we've seen this sort of hybrid clone attempt before, but it's never been so polished or so usable from any vendor until now. That rechargeable 181650 battery is a blessing. Who really cares if you only get six or eight hours on a single charge? Uh, end of the day, you simply charge it again or you carry a spare 18650 in your case and you'll never have to worry about runtime. Hey, it just worked. And no, you definitely won't be using this on an industrial mains, but you can safely use it on the home mains without any worries. The lackluster input protection may irk some, and yes, it can be improved, but it's certainly not a deal breaker, and it doesn't in any way reduce the functionality of the device. End of the day, Zotech did a truly amazing job on this hybrid multimeter. With excellent engineering and attention to detail, they have created a must-have for any person looking to upgrade or add to their test instrument toolbox. The Zoe ZT702S gets, wait for it, an incredible five out of five stars. Oh man, I haven't seen that. Yes, this is one amazing test instrument, folks. And man, at this price, I highly recommend it. Zoe, take a bow, my friend. You certainly deserve it. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. Five stars, amazing. Oh, yes. Big shout out to Zotech. Thanks so much for sending the Zotech. Oh my God. By the way, big shout out to Zotech. Thanks for sending this in. Oh, okay. The output voltage in dial mode is a busty 3.1 volts. What the heck is blessed to you? Okay, so you downloaded that wave file. Uh -huh.